Hello everyone, you are listening to You've Got Five Options show with Marta and Anna. Join us while we are solving yet another life challenge. And if you decide to share your problem with us, yours can be next. Hello everyone, this is Marta. And this is Anna. And this is You've Got Five Options show. Still without a new jingle, but give us a little bit of a time. And today we would like to continue with a really great topic that we have started uh, in the previous episode, the power of LinkedIn local. So basically here, Kati, our lovely guest, will tell us about five tips for being a better networker using LinkedIn local. And in the first part, we have talked about the background that Katie is coming from and why actually she started this whole thing. We also talked about what LinkedIn local is and uh, why is it so uh, powerful actually for networking. And if you are interested, then you definitely have to come back to the first episode, right? Yeah, and you can find it either on YouTube. You just have to type in, you've got five options. Not complicated. Or you can go to the mother of all places, which is our website. And it's the five options.com five as a number, the five options.com where you can find all our previous episodes and much more and much more. And you can also find a short article about who Katie is. Jesus, Katie, help me. Is it Katie? Katie? Why? Kathy. Why do I have so much problems with this? Maybe because we had Kate like a couple of episodes ago and I'm just mixed. No, actually, we had Kate for four episodes and now I wow. know I know it's not Kate so I'm trying to make some Katie Katie out of it I'm very sorry to make you feel better it, yes. you're not the only one who calls me Katie so that's okay really and you know thinking of Katie Holmes so maybe yeah it's okay to call me Katie as well it's not that bad it's yes. not that bad at all but uh, guys you will be able actually to find all the information about this show including Katie's bio Kati? Yes, you're right. <laughs> oh my God, thank you. Yes, we will have also all the information on how you can reach out to her and find out how to join the next link in local if you happen to be in Orhus. And I think it's, is it open also for tourists? Uh, yes, of course. For everyone. instance, if there is like a LinkedIn maniac out there in a very positive sense and he is passing through Aarhus, it's open for everyone. Yes, it's open for everyone as long as they registered. But if they're going to go and walk in you know, as a walk in registrant, yeah, that's also OK. But, uh, but that, they have that to have a good excuse for that. right? Yes. But, you know, I have people from Copenhagen who would be joining and coming from Copenhagen to Aarhus just to join the event. So that's really something we're looking forward to. Oh, wow, that's amazing. What about Copenhagen? They don't have it? They had one in um, December last year, and then they, there was no follow-up. And now there is someone who's wanted to organize, but he wants to see how it uh, goes here in Aarhus. So he's coming, but there are also other people who are very interested to come and uh, join us in the next event. Okay, so this is amazing. The capital comes to Aarhus to learn how to make a yes. proper LinkedIn local. Wow, that is that is uh, probably uh, the best recommendation in itself. So congratulations for that. Wow, this is amazing. Pretty yeah. amazing. And, and, you know, just to, there are people who reach out to me. There's even one guy, he works at LinkedIn in Ireland and he wants to come. But uh, maybe in a, one of our future ev events, because uh, for November he couldn't come. But he was so like, okay, when is it? Uh, but then he looked at his schedule and he couldn't make it. But in our future event, that means next year he's going to be, maybe he's going to be talking in the event as well. So we don't know. But yeah, that's pretty exciting that people from LinkedIn actually notice our event. This is, uh, this is amazing. Okay, the, I didn't know that. Of course, I, I knew kind of the background story, but this is quite uh, news for me. So, wow, I'm really impressed. Yeah. Thank you. You're very welcome. But in the first episode, we have started to talk about 
the five tips to become a better networker using LinkedIn Local. And we talked about the first one, which is find your purpose. So actually, why do you want to go there? And what do you expect from the meeting by the end? And Marta said that she will try and she has her purpose defined, right, Marta? Correcto. Correcto. Okay, very mysterious. I think in general, it's a good idea to have a purpose for doing something because then you actually can prepare yourself. But many people don't think about it. They just show up somewhere and then maybe they have regrets like, I could have prepared that or I could have actually do it differently. So guys, first of all, if you want to join LinkedIn Local, think about your purpose. Why are you going there? Even if it's to meet new people, then probably you have to prepare yourself mentally to talk with people, right? Not to stand in a corner. That's right. Yeah. So what is the second tip? The second tip is to know your value. That means what do you bring to the table? Networking is not just I want to meet you, but also I want you to meet me. So knowing one's value and being clear about what you can contribute would uh, give you this chance to communicate clearly to others what you represent. So I think that's, um, for example, when you come to an event and you say, oh, um, I can do this, I can produce music. So knowing your value and what you could give to others or what you could present to others would basically help you clear out the small talk. Because sometimes, you know, you meet someone and you're like, um, you don't have anything in common. You don't know yet that you have anything in common. But to say to someone, okay, this is what I do, then it opens the conversation. So knowing your value going to an event and saying this is what I do would really really help you in the long run yeah I think you have pointed out something very very important I think it was a couple of episodes ago when we had here Rachel Lul Lule actually that's the correct pronunciation see I have problems with pronunciation of name of our guests in general so please don't feel offended and uh, I remember when Rachel was talking about networking it was one of those lessons learned on the way to become an entrepreneur and she said when you are about to network or you want to network or you want to find yourself a mentor on LinkedIn you cannot come with this kind of uh, me 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 I want can you help me can you teach me Uh, She called it, I think, a network vampire. I think it's a quite awesome way to put it. So basically uh, what you are trying to say, at least this is how I understand it, is that you have to think what can you also present with yourself? What is your value? What is your story? You are not coming just, okay, I'm here and now everyone please stream your wisdom or offers to me. You actually have to know your value to present yourself and be interesting for others to approach you. Am I understanding yes, this correctly? Yes, uh, totally. And as we said before, like land like a butterfly. Don't be like a salesman just presenting everything that you want to sell. So it's very important to know your value, but you have to know when to tell others about your value. So it's like, um, how, how could you call it? Cha-cha, you know, when you're dancing cha-cha. Yeah. So you give in and then you, you take so you take something, but then you also you give. So it's like that. You have to know to have the balance because in a networking, guys, what's very important is you have to be remembered for the right reasons. Okay, you don't want to be remembered as this funny salesman who's selling everything to everyone. You want to be remembered for the right reasons, and for that, you have to be perceptive of others, and you also know and confident about what you can give, the value that you give to others. Yeah, I, I think this is quite an amazing example of cha-cha because what I was uh, imagining in my head was cha-cha where one person only takes and the other one is dragged, uh, you know, like in a dance. <laughs> okay, that's funny. And, and that was actually quite picturesque and uh, convincing. So I, I, I think uh, it was a great example. Marta, what do you think? So I was reflecting on what you said before, like when thinking about your value to think about what you do. So that you can start it. And I was actually thinking about more who you are rather than what you do. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes, I mean, what you do at work or what you're employed for or something might not necessarily be your highest value. And you can have much more to offer than only what you do in your everyday life. It could also be about what you would love to do. It could also be about your passions, about your interests. So that's why I was just actually kind of thinking like, you know, prepare your value of who you are. 
also, not only what you do. Uh, that's a good point. And uh, in LinkedIn Local, we try to do that. We say from online to offline, but it's connecting humans. So it's not just, okay, I do this, I'm a salesman, or I do this, I'm a teacher, but who am I really? Women, who am I? And what can I tell you about my story? And and this is one thing that I love about LinkedIn Local is that we try to give people space to tell their story. And when people talk about something very personal, then you don't really care so much about impressing others. You just want to tell others about who you are. And that's when you get to know people by them being themselves out there. So I think that's one one thing that you pointed out it's who you are as a person so know your value as a person not just and professionally but personally yeah I, i think that's a fantastic point and i'm thinking if there is a way to facilitate that at the linkedin local are you doing something to encourage people or give them space to share those stories Yeah, exactly. We first we have when you come into Lincoln Local, of course, there's the registration and people talk to each other. And uh, and then we start with our topic. So we have an expert, we invite someone. And for this next event, it's going to be compassionate leadership. And then 30 minutes of that, then we move on to another part, which we call networking by numbers. So what we do is that we give people numbers. And for example, if I get number four, then I have to find people who has the same number as what I have. Then these people, there will be about four or five of them, then they talk. And then we also have, this would be about 30 minutes. And then after that, there's another kind of networking. We call it networking by topic. So um, we have signs of different topics. For example, if you want to talk about personal branding, So we have a sign there in the room or in the restaurant where there's personal branding, there's career strategies, there could be um, cultural experience, creative hobbies, and then basically people choose where they want to go. So if I say, okay, I want to talk about my creative hobbies, I'm a really good musician. So then you go to that side of the room, to that side of the restaurant, and then you talk to people, you talk about your creative hobbies to others. That's uh, that's actually brilliant. Uh, is it your own solution or is it a regular thing that is implemented on every LinkedIn local? No, um, uh, basically with LinkedIn local, you do, you create, you curate your own event. And um, this is me and Katrina's idea um, because we, we met up and we were like, okay, people go to a networking event and then they stand there and like they're, they don't know how what to do. And they just stand there and wait and then it feels awkward and then they leave. But when you have activities to do, then you feel like, okay, I want to meet people, but also talk to them about certain topics that we have in common, then um, it's more effective. So we do it like this because it's purposeful. And then um, I think it's way better uh, than coming to an event and you don't know um, who to talk to. You don't know what to do. I think it's uh, fantastic. And uh, LinkedIn local Copenhagen and any other LinkedIn locals who are missing some ideas about how to spice up or just turn up, power up this networking game, you definitely have to give Katy a call or actually follow you on LinkedIn because you are posting all of those things there, right? Yes, it's on LinkedIn. Or do we also have a Facebook group called the uh, LinkedIn Local Ohus. Please find that and check that out. And and then we have pictures in there. We have uh, everything about our event is in there. Sometimes with with uh, what our event, we also do live, what do you call it? Facebook Live. Yeah. Ah, and yeah. Even, so yeah. people can actually watch you in a real yeah, time. Yeah, if okay. they can't make it. So they start by, okay, still online, online to online, you should say. But yeah, the, everything is in there on our Facebook page. It's called LinkedIn Local Ohus. And all the links you will be able to find under this episode on our webpage, which is the five options.com and five as a number. I cannot stress it more. Okay, but I'm super curious to hear about the third tip. The third one is to be you. I mean, uh, be yourself. Don't be afraid or intimidated by others. And remember that you are connecting with humans themselves. So don't be intimidated. And also one thing you have to learn, as I mentioned before, the best networkers out there are those that would land softly like a butterfly. So I always say to others that to be interesting, you have to be interested. 
So learn about other people, learn about their story. And then when you find um, a way to ask them questions, then do that, you know, listen to them and then ask them questions. And then maybe later on, they would ask you about yourself. And that's when you could share to them your story. Yeah, I have a question. Do you think that some people are, and actually that's a question for both of you, when people are coming to a networking events like this, especially that this is a LinkedIn uh, local, so there is definitely some sort of a, could be an agenda of looking for a potential employment. Do you think that people have doubts or are afraid to be themselves? Well, you know, people are very different and there are people who are Um, not very talkative Uh, so what they do is they usually observe other people and then they try to talk to others who are very open and friendly but then there are people who are also very open and friendly and so yeah uh, I think that um, going to an event you just be yourself and I mean to say when yourself that means you know you you don't feel intimidated of others but also try your best to reach out to others because I understand that it could be difficult especially for those that are very shy and they go to an event that it could be challenging for them but it's also a way for them to challenge themselves and reach out especially if they really have a purpose on finding others or finding employment That's why I think that having a clear purpose about why you're going would really help you. And uh, that means when you have purpose, you prepared yourself for it. And when you prepared yourself for it, then you are way more confident than just coming to an event without any purpose. Yeah, I I think so. But I'm also wondering if you have maybe encountered any situation, both of you, in any other professional settings where people were trying to pretend someone they are not because they think I am not good enough the way I am or for instance well normally I'm just a really funny weird nerdy person but I have to pretend that I'm very professional or something have you have you seen those situations so I think that the beauty of your tips is that the second step was know your value so I think it makes it much easier first you get yourself prepared then you think about you know what's my value and you can also think about what are my values (laughs) so you can also kind of prepare yourself in this way and I think sinking into that feeling a little bit prepared and sinking into okay I actually do have something to share to others can help you really be there and be you yeah exactly and you know yeah if you're not authentic about who you are people could see it so yeah you might say like oh I want to be like this and you know like oh I'm super friendly and that but people could feel it so um, I'm, I'm not gonna advise anyone to say okay yeah when I say do your best I mean you know do your best to present who you really are but don't do your best to be inauthentic but just be yourself in knowing your values as you said Marta so um, that would help you but being inauthentic, just faking it, it's not going to help. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I think that we, we have an inner compass for bullshit, all of us. <laughs> exactly. And I think we can see through people who are trying to be some, someone else. And I think that in many cases that just comes from insecurities. But Marta, that, that was a fantastic point. If you will go through these tips as steps, first your purpose, preparation, and then your value, then it's easier to notice that you as you is the most amazing thing that you could offer to others because no one really wants to see you trying to be someone else, right? Yeah, and if I might add to that, if you see people who are very successful and they're very likable, it's because these people really know who they are and they don't care if people like them or not. And then we like them because they are being themselves. So that's one thing to consider. Be yourself and don't be afraid to show who you really are. Yeah, I I totally agree. Couldn't agree more, actually. So what was our tip number four? Number four is give more than you receive. Okay, for other people, like, what? You just told me I have to be purposeful in something. But really, when you give more than you receive, it's a, that means you become a source. Um, like, for example, I just give example for me. I'm creating this event. And after the event, I actually reach out to people and say, okay, do you want to contact this company? Okay, do you want to contact these people? Maybe you could have a mentor. So this is... Um, Maybe because it's a satisfaction for me to help people, but really you could be remembered when you give. It's usually a giver, when you're a giver, when you tell other people uh, what you can do for them, 
then uh, that makes you being remembered, better remembered, actually. And then people, that's a way for you to highlight what you can do. That, that's actually a very good point. It's, a, it's actually a highlight of what you could do also in a professional settings. This is a, an amazing tip. Marta, what do you think? Well, I think in general, it's a really great tip. I'm just thinking, uh, just make sure that you don't take it in a wrong way and you don't try to, for example, like over give advice that it's not <laughs> because I think there is sometimes also those people that want to give so much, yeah. but maybe there is no, uh, you know, respondents to that. <laughs> yes, totally giving. agree with yeah. you. So uh, I, in general, I, I really agree. It was just, you know, like a side note going in yeah. my head that sometimes the best you can give is actually ability to listen. So if someone who is maybe a little bit shy, you know, finally comes and opens up a little bit and starts, uh, you know, talking to you and saying about himself, actually, the best thing you can give is a good ear to listen. Yeah, exactly. And um, a very important point. And it's good that you mentioned that because, hey, give because you are wholeheartedly giving. Don't give because you're like, okay, I have to fake this and give. No, give what you could give. You have to have a border for this. Yeah, um, A border like when can you give? Because I also understand with some people, they just ask for too much. That's impossible. That is another point to it. I, I totally agree. Yeah. yeah, because they they see that, oh, okay, she likes giving information. She likes helping out in this. And then they take advantage. Then you have to have a border. No, this is what I can give you. Yeah, actually, I have to tell you, I just have an example from my own life. Literally five days ago, usually when someone writes to me on LinkedIn and asks me for an advice, it's still LinkedIn, just not local. I usually reply. Because, you know, someone wants to, uh, is asking me, for instance, about podcast or this. And then there was a guy who approached me and he was like, hey, I'm starting podcast uh, here in Denmark and uh, this and this. Could you please help me with a couple of things? And he wrote me a couple of questions. And I was, okay, I know how hard it is to start and stuff. So I responded, like I gave him like half a page answer. He didn't even wrote me, thank you. And I was like, Okay, maybe next time <laughs> before I will give so much because, you know, it's like, it's not about that I want to hear the thank you, but it's like I had a feeling he took everything he wanted and then he simply, you know, like uh, disappeared from, from the radar. So uh, I think you have to have a certain border, especially if you like to give advices and you have to put yourself some sort of a limit. Yeah, and that's a good way to tell others or listeners that, yes, uh, if you're networking, you would meet this kind of people. They just receivers. They don't give. They don't. So they get something from you and then that's it. The network uh, vampires. Yeah. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Network vampires. Yeah. yeah. So how do you deal with network vampires? Well, um, I don't gravitate in their area. So I basically just focus my energies on those people who I know could get my help or who I know uh, is very thankful for what I can do for them. So but, those people that are vampires. Um, but if they are chasing you, they are, you know, with their teeth uh, grabbing onto your neck. How do you deal with that? So I do my ninja stuff I ca Eric. or karate stuff. <laughs> <laughs> That sounds that sounds amazing. Yeah. No, but l really, I mean, you know, I'm looking for advice because some people, they are not very good with, you know, like going away. You know, they don't know how to say no. They don't know yeah. how to put that border. So yeah. what, what I do, like if there are people like this, I give them one answer. No. And then no reason. I, I don't give them reasons why I just say no. Then then that means that that is it. I don't want to deal with you anymore. So just no and uh, no reason why. Because if you give reasons, then they would ask, like, why do you, like, they would continue. But if you give them precise answer, no, then they, I think that's one way. That's a, that's a very good advice because you don't look like you are explaining yourself. Yeah. You, you, you show some uh, really strong assertiveness. Great advice. Thank you for that. Welcome. And then we have our last one. Which was? Last one is to build a relationship because going to an event, like for example, a LinkedIn local event, is just a door for you. It's opening a door. It's up to you what you want to get out of it. 
So you follow up. I, I advise people to follow up on others. Ask them. Try to build a relationship. Because really, it, it's not effective if you just come to an event and then after that you go home and you don't do anything about it. So do follow up. Try to get to know others. Meet them for coffee because in Denmark, it's very popular to have coffee meetings. <laughs> Meet others for coffee and uh, get to know them. And uh, you, you will see how the relationship will go. Yeah, I, I think I totally agree. I think it's when we think about it, it, it's obvious, right? You went on the networking event, you met some people, you should kind of follow up. But I think that m many people don't do it. It's it's quite, it's a, it's a very curious matter for me. Like, so you went there and then you don't really like keep in touch with anyone. What, you know, it's really interesting. That, Have you seen those situations? Yes, yes, there are actually many. I would not name them, but... You see, um, that's the difference between people who are good networkers, who get something out of networking, and people who just just go there and then that's it. Because people who are good networkers, they do follow up. And that's the difference. Because they follow up, they meet people for coffee, they get something out of it, they, they ask for advice or referral. Like, for example, if I meet someone and she works at Vestas, just an example, and I'm really interested to join this company... Then I say, can we have coffee meeting? And then ask her about the company. Mm -hmm. And that's one way for you to be remembered. And who knows, the next time they have an opening, she would think of you and say, maybe you could send an application. So follow up, build a relationship. And you, you could just imagine how it would help you in the long run. Yeah, I, I can totally agree. And I think it was also a good point that you mentioned that if you go for a coffee with someone from the company you're interested in, ask about how is the company and so on. Don't try to push your CV and, and say, okay, listen, this is my CV. Can you somehow get me in there? Because that, uh, I think it's very off-putting. Yes. No, that's not a good advice. If you just like, uh, let's meet for coffee. Here's my CV. Could you do something about, about it? No, that person would not recommend you. I'm telling you. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so I, I think that that last tip was very eye-opening, actually, because I think many people have tendency to push CVs on others. Uh, so thank you for that, Kati. Yes. Oh, my You're God. Welcome. Finally. You got end, it. You got my name. The end of the second episode, and I finally <laughs> can pronounce your name correctly. So for everyone who was listening, thank you very much. You can find this episode both on YouTube and as a podcast and to find the podcast where do you have to go girls well you need to have a podcast application on your phone for mm -hmm. example and then you can find it there just say you've got five options or type in you've got five options or say and it will convert to text could also be yeah if you have a very smart smartphone <laughs> and then uh, of course you can find everything on our website which is the five options.com Five yes. as a number. Five as a number. So, uh, Kati, thank you so much. For thank being. you for having me. Yes, thank you so much for being here. I think that it was a fantastic show from which I actually learned a lot, to be honest. Great. And I am considering going to LinkedIn local Aarhus, even if I'm not from Aarhus. And everyone else, you are most welcome. When is the next one? It's on the 7th of November. It's in Lima, Restaurant Lima in Aarhus. But you need to register before. Yes, please do that. You could find the link on our Facebook page, Link in Local Aarhus, or you could connect with me on LinkedIn and you would find the link to where you could register. Definitely. So thank you so much again for being here, Kati. Marta, thank you for uh, giving us some really interesting points to some of the things uh, Kati said, because actually you, are, you were right you are always right. And uh, for everyone else, uh, remember to tune in for our next show. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye, Bye guys. Bye. You are listening to You've Got 5 Options show, where we solve your life challenges. Remember that you can visit our website, the5options.com, where you can submit your challenge or find our previous challenges. That's all, folks. <laughs>